there, everybody. This is Pittsburgh Pat, and I'm here with Heather Malik. How are you today, Heather? Hi, Pat. Good to see you. It's great to see you. I haven't seen you in like 15, 16 months, it feels like, in person. Yeah. We used to have a pottery studio, and I think the potter in residence is coming here to say hi. Surprise. Hey! Terry Days. How are you? So well. <laughs> Good. I put the I put the old lady shades on here, the clip-ons, just for this. For it. Do well, they clip I, up? I, Are they like the 80s no, clip-ups? No, oh, man. They're See? The, they're the, they're the you know what, Tara? I was a little undecided on which pair of sunglasses. Can I can I show you yeah, the let's do a little fashion. other pair and see what you think? Ooh, I like those. I do. I like those better, too. The circles? All right. <laughs> I like them both, but the rolled. circles definitely... Cool. And well, I feel I'm like, listen, and the I'm reflection. Gonna listen, I'm just going to listen in. You can hang then, out if you want. Uh, no, I got to keep continue painting. I'll let you guys do your thing. Sounds good. Nice to see yeah. you. Forever the artist, Tara. <laughs> With her mermaid hair. My gosh. I know. I that guess. shows a length of time, the length yes. of hair. <laughs> yes. Yes. You can tell I haven't mastered cutting hair. She won't let me cut her hair. <laughs> While we have the audience, everybody smash like for us. If you do it in the first couple of minutes, it's really great for the algorithm. So um, yeah, um, all right, we're gonna do a little speed round. So do you like tacos or egg rolls? Um, tacos. Okay, peanut butter or jelly? Peanut butter. B-52s or the Go-Go's? Uh, B-52s. Marx Brothers, Three Stooges. Um, Stooges. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Like, I'm indifferent. I'm you not like pass. a- You're allowed to pass. Fan. You're allowed to I'm pass. I'm pass. I mean, sorry. I'm, we may have lost some people here, Pat. <laughs> I don't think so. iPhone or Android? Oh, I, iPhone all the way. <laughs> Cake or pie? Um, depends on what time of day, but I guess I'll just go with cake. Okay, so cake in the morning and pie in the evening? No, Vice let's swap person. that. Swap that. All right. Pie for breakfast, cake the rest of the day. <laughs> What's your favorite kind of pie? Um, like like a, a, a classic apple that's like shaved very thin. And Ooh. then I like when people kind of play off of a classic apple with uh, different toppings and brown sugars. Cinnamon, brown sugar, yeah. I love yeah, that. there was a farm stand on um, uh, Freeport Road that closed, but they had one called Brown Betty, this apple pie that was just like killer. For a decade, I got it and it's it's no more. Oh, it sounds so good though. So you're like one of my um, my greatest benefactors. You've you've bought <laughs> bought pieces of art off me, which thank you so much. I just want to be. But the one uh, you you shared something on social media the other day. It was a shelf. It was full of individual artists and one piece of art from each of those artists. I just thought that was such a unique thing to do, you know. And, and you had them very meticulously arranged. So what what is the like? Is there a kind of like a reason for that or is that like, and was that in your home or was that in the Airbnb? Yeah, that was in my home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we had been doing a lot of renovation um, for fun, kind of creating this space that I'm sitting in, but also out of necessity, we had a water leak. Uh, also that like all three of us were on top of one another in our home with our rescue dog and our other dog and um, so we were changing the space around a little bit and I was really anxious to just get these beautiful handmade pieces of art in their forever place. And I spent so much time and that was just like a snippet of a part of a larger shelf. So we've been collecting ceramic work. We've been very fortunate to be friends with people and just encouraged to feel fine to eat soup anytime ice cream anytime out of a handmade bowl. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't just have to sit on a shelf, but mm -hmm. we do have some other um, beautiful pieces that, uh, yeah. And you were in a line with um, some, some pretty stellar artists and they all, everything just looked so fantastic together. It was, it was really cool. And I felt like it was something I wanted to share out. And then I, I, I have a couple more 
one other shelf I shared, and then I have multiple others. Um, I thought I'd just sporadically share with people well, before was, they can come to my home and actually see it. Well, I was proud to be in that company. I, I, I know that like you have this concept that I think is pretty unique. And um, Diana Nelson Jones actually featured you in an article um, in Post Gazette. She actually mentioned me in an article recently. I have to talk to her. She's such a great, great person. And um, yeah. But um, yeah, so it was about this idea you have called a nesting box. Do you want to talk about what a nesting box is? Uh, yeah, and uh, the article that, that she wrote was actually, um, was addressing the difficulty or the shift in um, just air, so many sectors during the pandemic, but specifically uh, short-term rentals. Um, and how we just altered and changed. So that was uh, one property uh, across the bridge in Millville. And then in my home, I had um, an addition put on my house. So I was left with two front doors and my architects were like, I mean, like who, who wants two front doors? Like close one up. And I thought, no, 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 no. If I don't need to spend the money, I'm not going to. And like, maybe it'll come in use sometime. Well, this room, we kind of wrote off quite a bit and it was just used to like hold like ice skates and winter clothes. And we always had the best intentions of using it, but it, with the new flow into our house, never, never materialized into anything other than a catch-all that was useless. Um, and uh, when we had first done our renovation, we, our son was younger and we didn't have rescue dogs or chickens. And uh, we used to rent our house on Airbnb and I really liked getting some passive income. Though it was ever passive, Pat. I don't yeah, I was gonna to, say, like, that's not really passive income, is it? It's, it's not, I'd have to like uh, time it to like not grocery shop too much, to not have too full of a fridge. I mean, when I look back on that, we used to exit our home for strangers to come in, I'm still like befuddled on how we did this, but <laughs> we did it at that time. But I wanted to return to that. And um, it's a small space. I had like a weird, this weird idea and I was having drinks at a friend's um, outdoor farm space and was sitting across from um, some friends that are architects. I mentioned the idea to them. I just, another glass of wine, another, I'm gonna have a hotel room in my house. And uh, I followed up with that friend and had her do drawings. And then they sat for a while and I explored all the different possibilities because what I tackled Pat was like tiny living, right? This is, I live in a house built in the late 1890s. Uh, it's one of the tinier, it was like a mill house. Like I'm not talking, I live up on the hill. This was like a mill worker's house. Right, right. So I am only 14 feet wide. Wow. Right. The interior. Yes. This is modest. So to fit a bathroom, right? We had a bathroom, a bed, space to move about, um, took, took some calculations and that's where a professional um, who can do the math and knows the coding, you know, the code for even like the distance from the toilet to the wall. And I mean, we really like paid a lot of attention to tiny space. And then, um, I've mentioned I have chickens. Uh, so because we really wanted this to be a space that I, I don't, Pat, when you've traveled, maybe you've only wanted to like have a place to put your stuff, take a shower and sleep, but like you're out, you know, you're out the rest of the time. Right. So that was the type of place we were trying to create for people. Um, so our chickens uh, actually move about our yard uh, during the day. And then at night they come back, they go into their nesting box. So um, we have called this nesting box. Ah. And uh, my husband said, oh, and in the description on Airbnb or short-term rental website, we'll have to say that people will free range in Lawrenceville. Ha ha ha. Very nice. I like that. So then we kind of did this. A I had a friend design this uh, quilt pattern behind me. It's actually Love made it. out of recycled water bottles that are felt tiles that are acoustic um, support as well. So we kind of, it's like a barn quilt. So we did like a little farmy, just a slight nod to 
Pennsylvania Dutch. Yeah. I can sort of see now you say that before that I was just thinking more of like, you know, um, I just thinking more of a Mondrian or something like that, you know? Yeah. And this friend, and, and that's what was, it was very subtle, right? So like mm -hmm. maybe you'd pick that up, but you don't have to, it just kind of creates um, a, a strong visual focus. But you have a specific like idea for an artist's like um, gathering space too, right? Yes. You have, yeah. So um, with Nesting Box, the idea is that we would have people come and stay and pay. And uh, before we've listed it, and it's been such a process in here, kind of making the space feel just perfect mm -hmm. in the limited footprint. So I'm sitting here at a desk in front of the window that goes up and down, and we have folding chairs um, that, that, it, oops, um, that are that are against the wall. <laughs> um, I almost let my paper show. Oh my. All right. So, um, so I've spent time in here. I thought, oh, it's like such a nice escape. So then it led me to this idea that you can't really do much in here, but you could work on your sketchbook. Right. And if you had no other distractions, and you could walk and get whatever food you needed up the street and make coffee here and like take walks by the river or to the cemetery and just kind of do a straight focus on your sketchbook that um this could serve that purpose i did uh, that well. actually um it's funny you, you mentioned that in my early 20s i was a couple years out of college and i decided i was going to try to write my novel right so i went down to nags head where the novel took place part of the novel took place okay and uh i rented a beach house and it was November, it had no heat. I had not anticipated that. But yes, <laughs> during the day, I just went all over the Outer Banks and just, you know, I'd sit by the lighthouse, you know, and I, or I'd go hang gliding or I'd do like whatever the character was doing, I would do. And then I would oh, write cool. that, you know, to get that fresh experience. And um, yeah, so it was it, like, like you said, it was just a place to throw my stuff, you know, like I wasn't spending a lot of time there because it was just me. And I was going out to like socialize by going out to the restaurants and meeting the restaurant workers because there's no tourists at that time of year. Uh, so, oh, um, sure. Yeah. I added a shipping container to my house here in Lawrenceville. Okay. And that's what led me with two front doors. And that's the nesting box. Yes. And, and this, I think the nesting box is only a total of 260 square feet. If it's, if even that, I mean, it's really, it's really quite tiny. Okay. It's more like an RV. Okay. Yeah, it feels it feels like an RV. Um, the other space was a house, a similar age, late 1800s. Um, oh, sorry. So here I added the shipping container and we did a big renovation. My husband said, great, you like this. Go somewhere else with someone else's money and like do it. Like you got to chill out here. That was a few years ago because I have I have managed to do other projects here. Uh, I found a house, so Millville's just across the river, very cool, they have a music festival that luckily I just saw them put signs up that it's going to happen. Yes, I'm excited to go, I, that's probably going to be my first music, musical event. Yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the arts festival is coming up, but that's, oh, that's, a true. Little, that's a little soon, and you know, I think that's in a, a we'll week. scope it out, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the house I found was condemned by the city. Um, there were like numerous kinds of animal feces in this house. Um, what water can do damage wise is oh, shocking. It's your worst enemy as a homeowner. Water. What, in, what invasive um, growth can do. I mean, we had like trees growing into this house because water had been damaged over the years of just collecting. Um, so I took it on myself because it is in a perfect location and I saw the charm to it. It's right between uh, Grist House, um, which is a very pop popular brewery, and Mr. Smalls, which is a very mm -hmm. popular music venue. Uh, the best, then, I mean, in my opinion, all the, all the shows that I want to see come to Mr. Smalls. Yeah. You know, they're, ju did. they're just and the Bill right again. guys. Yeah, it's awesome. That's a great, it's a great venue. And... If you walk down the hill, you can go to Jean Marc's, right? And uh, 
One of yes. the best patisseries yes. in the city. Yes. And actually, I think I sent you. So maybe if the graphic can pop up, I had an artist do a hand drawing of Millville as a map, kind of showing all of the different cool features in walking distance. Smart idea. And, um, had Juniper Place located, you know, at the center of it all. <laughs> I love the name Juniper Place. That's a great name. Thanks. The house was green when we got it, and we tried to stick with a his historic color. It was also like, I mean, this took a year to basically rebuild the entire house. But the neighbors would come by and, and really enjoyed watching the process and really appreciated this being done. I mean, sure. it was, uh, you know, the, the neighbors uh, a couple doors down that had a small child was like horrified by this house. It was like the haunted house. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, well, no, every, no, not the green I went with. <laughs> every neighborhood has to have the haunted house, you know? Yeah, well, this has been, you know, turned around so it's, it not the, it's, it's not even like it remotely looks like what it used to i mean from if it's the, you know the one where they had the drone going down and that's the tour that i was thinking of yeah my goodness and the view from you know of the of the river just amazing so so we're your dog friendly um that has worked out really well um and right now we have um are you a game of thrones fan i know game of thrones very well I'm not like a super fan, but um, we have a Netflix producer and her partner who, I guess his whole family worked on Game of Thrones. Oh, cool. Um, are staying here. They moved over from another Airbnb when ours um, became available because we've had actually a lot of people, Pat, in this house, which is not a huge house, but it's comfortable enough. It's way better than a hotel. I have had, I think this will be, before before these current folk that just came yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, six people in a row who were moving to Pittsburgh to find a house and didn't know where they were going to live, so rented our place for a very long chunk of time. So they can explore and find out where they want to live. That's wonderful. Actually, it's funny you mentioned Game of Thrones because uh, I interviewed a friend of mine, uh, Jeff Geisler, and he used to live in Santa Fe, and he was a reporter in Santa Fe, and he actually interviewed and went into the home of the man who wrote the game of thrones books so wow yeah so that's uh so we'll have to link that interview in the description but like it's cool. amazing how um all of these kinds of ideas these concepts they all like flow together because when you're talking about the tiny house another interview we did uh, with uh, Diane um, Turncheck, she's an astronomer. Um, oh, I know Diane. You know Diane. I do know Diane. She has a tiny house, and in fact, I did know that, but I don't know good details. I'm they built it, it off-site, and if you watch that interview, she talks about the process. They loaded on a truck. They had to raise like the the uh, traffic signals and and take it to her to her lot. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's pretty wild. So well, you, me, and Diane will have to get together sometime. And when we had our container delivered, we had um, and and talking about movies getting filmed in the city, but I had to get variances to get people to not park on the street. Right. I was on the heels of multiple um, film crews, and I had to go to the police and and I mean get a special permit to have all cars moved right to be able to make the turn but the the manager had to come and look at like our electric lines like when they had to lift it off the truck would it clear it so sure yeah wow oh i'll have to watch that interview cool mm -hmm. nice i closed the studio nice. when things went down and so now i have a kick wheel on the front porch and we have like the third floor is yeah mm -hmm, we can teach you on the front porch it's awesome oh and, that's uh, great yeah it's beautiful it's really it's worked out really well it's not you know it's amazing how like you don't plan things and sometimes the universe just says hey you know what here's something even better than you were thinking and, yeah and it's like wow I can work with this you know, you know? yeah I'm and it's sure amazing you know. how quickly I mean it's not effortlessly, effortlessly, but we can adapt, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what we've all have shown as humans. We've, as modern humans, how much we've adapted. I mean, you know. We're eminently adaptable. There is no doubt about that. Yeah. Lifelong learners. Yes. So on a totally different track, 
Yeah. We were talking about something nice you had done for somebody in the last 24 hours. You were telling me the story about uh, a bouncing ball. You're bouncing a ball in, in a, um, in a store, in a, uh, not a supermarket, but like a, yeah, no, it was a supermarket. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a supermarket in Bloomfield. It used to be called sure save lovingly sure save. And actually Pat, they had the best sunglasses. Oh, nice. And they pay, played like the grooviest 70s soundtrack. Like my son and I would sometimes go there like later in the evening. I'd be like, let's go to Sure Save. And we'd pick a new pair of sunglasses and like dance through the grocery store. Nice. And it was it was fantastic. And they had all kinds of like knockoff Pittsburgh t-shirts for like five bucks. Very um, cool. Oh, actually, that's right down the street from Tessera's, which is one of the best places you can get a burger. In burgers, there. Oh, baby, yeah. you're right. Mm -hmm. Actually, I almost pulled the mask out. I, I got a mask. Either it was from there or it was from their same manufacturers that say I'm surrounded by Jagoffs. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's a great. I've been making masks oh. been, uh, into Dogecoin lately. Oh, yeah, actually. So these are, I, these I are all, these oh. are all symbols of money in different, obviously that's a Euro. This is like Vietnamese. I forget. I think this is Danish, but like, I thought, I don't know. Well, I'm wearing, a, I'm wearing the hat at the same I see thing. it now this, in your hat too. Are you hand painting those? Yeah, this is hand painted. So um, I, I bought some fabric paint for the heck of it. Cause you yeah. know, with an artist. And so, uh, yeah, so I'll throw this on. Actually, I threw it on eBay. This will be for sale in the, We'll see if I can get 15 bucks for it. Who knows? Hey, I know you guys are super crafty up in that. Uh, we just, you know, this place is, is like. Crafty compound. Yeah. I mean, we, <laughs> I mean, it was before, but now, you know, we were staying home the whole time. So like, right. it's like, okay, here's the computer station. Here's like the easel. Here's like the clay, you know, it, it, it's, it's awesome. I don't have to leave my house. <laughs> perfectly content um well my son is into uh he said the other day he wanted to invest some in dogecoin but i it's well, like i i would recommend like uh being into the um cultural movement i would yes, not exactly because yes. it's out of i mean it's like not even i like, would not commit a ton of capital to it since it's a coin that was designed to self-destruct you know <laughs> basically so um yeah let's let's not get on a roller coaster that has no end you know or has a cliff as an it end, has a, you know? that's a good way to say it that yeah so like because pat there there are ways to make to not go broke doing good Yes. And that's that exactly is what right. I'm like trying to figure out is uh, moving from a starving artist to one who can support the arts and kind of well, part of more of a cultural exchange. And fortunately, people are starting to do that. They're starting to invest their money where where their values are. Yeah. Not just definitely. trying to get rich, you know. So, Here you go. Yeah. All right. I'm going to segue from um, Apple to the color red. Yes. Which was the color of the ball I was bouncing. So I went to Sure Save, which what was used to be called Sure Save, and now it's community market. It was purchased by Giant Eagle. Um, and just kind of late on Saturday night. And um, since then, I've actually been noticing um, that this is the time of year where ball, little fun, airy, lofty balls are being sold in large bins. So um, my son and nephew were home and we were going to be seeing family the next day. And I thought, well, I'm going to get two of them. They were $2 each. So um, when I was checking out, uh, guy said, do you, do you want bags for them? I said, well, maybe one in a bag and one I'll just carry. And he spun it on his finger. And I mean, it was the kind of ball, you just get it in your hands and there's no way to not feel playful. I mean, yeah. it just, so he the one that was on his finger like bounced off of the counter and and was like bouncing on the floor and the check out towards the exit and uh i i do have a hurt ankle right now but it was it was wrapped so i i pulled out some basketball moves and i just like caught up with the ball and carried my bags and dribbled it out of the door and passed the manager and she had a big smile on her face 
Mm. And uh, so I just continued bouncing it through the parking lot. And there was an older woman who was loading up her car and it was really at the end of the night. And we both were kind of some of the only people in the parking lot. And we just kind of had our back and forth. So hello, how are you doing? Have a good night. Have a good weekend. Um, and I overheard her just kind of saying quietly that she knew her grandkids would love a ball like that. And um, just kind of quickly like calculating that like the store's closing, she's elderly making that trip back in. Like, what would that mean? So I just yelled, hey, I got an, I got two balls. You want this ball? And I went over to her and, you know, I think something that's really important is just accepting help or kindness when people are offering it. And she didn't skip a beat. I mean, she said, I mean, since you're asking, yes, I will take that ball. I said, yeah, sure, enjoy it. And then she said, wait, I have two packages of popsicles. And she held these frozen popsicles up. She said, pick one, I want you to have one. And um, I picked one and I said, thank you. And my husband was sitting in the car and he was like, that kind of stuff just like goes on with you. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then I came home and the boys were playing video games and they weren't going to play with a plastic ball at that time, but I gave them each a banana popsicle and they were thrilled. So, but it does. And, and the funny thing is it does happen to you. And, and one of the great things that I, one of the things I love about you is you have this positive energy. You always do. And, and it's obvious that that does not surprise that story did not surprise me because knowing yeah. you, the sp your spontaneity and your playfulness with life. And, you know, the um, other day I was walking, lady was walking and, and she had her phone out and she was playing music. I guess she didn't want her earbuds in. So in case, you know, traffic, or traffic, whatnot. sure. So she wanted to be aware of what was going on around her. It's just bikers out and stuff. Not that early usually, but it, they were playing, um, they were playing, she was playing uptown funk. Right. And I couldn't help it. I just couldn't. I mean, like, so, um, She's just about to pass me. And I went, don't believe me, just watch. Woo! And I did a little spin. And I think I freaked her out, you know? Like, she was like, oh, my God. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but you weren't playing the music, you know? And then we laughed about it. But I realized I probably could have got maced, you know? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Only it was if like, she had had a cup of coffee first. Because, you know, that, that early in the morning, you may be delayed in any responses. Well, she was walking. She was, like, moving. Like, she was out for her exercise. So she was fully awake you know what's up babe nothing i'm in between colors yeah. <laughs> oh let it let watch and paint dry we're yeah. better than that huh yeah just taking a moment <laughs> great that's cool i gotta get tomatoes this week i gotta get a fork. oh oh tara what? you can't i have tomato we have tomatoes i'm trying to get rid of like really nice size plants are you serious yeah. Uh, yeah. Drawer has like, a, we have three to five plants we're getting rid of. So he was like, you just don't have room for them. And they're, um, they're looking good. Do you I want another, do you want another lightsaber hill? Uh, do you well, want to, we'll, we'll trade you. I'll trade, I'll trade you a piece of art. I want one of your hand painted uh, Doja coin somethings. Okay, sure. Something <laughs> for Z. We'll, well do that. You yeah. got it. I'll, I'll okay. give you a hat. Are you you want a hat or a mask? I'll give you both. Thanks, Heather. Yeah. Thank you. Are, you, are you particular though? I think we have some cherry. There's some yellow. There's some heirloom. Nope. Nope. Okay. I'm ready. I'll, I'll be surprised. I'll take care of them all. I talk to them. I sing to them. Well, My yeah. one friend said, "You're nobody." I actually texted him that he was talking about pets, and I said, "Well, I, I have tomato plants." He said, uh, I, "He said they make poor pets." I said, "No, I sing to mine." He's like, "Nobody has to know that." I said, "Oh, the neighbors mm -hmm. know. The neighbors know." I sing. But I know she gives me weird looks. So <laughs> do you want to plug your uh, consulting business? Oh, um, sure. Tell us about that. We'll put yeah. it in the comment. We'll put it in the description box. We'll yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I go by the name Public Studio. Um, I head it. Um, but when when a project calls for it, I have subcontractors. So I have, I have writers and builders uh, that, I, that I work with. Um, it's communications and connection strategy um with universities sometimes with other designers i've been, i actually recently just helped a friend who spun out from a game design company she she was pretty senior there and had been there during its growth from like 15 people to 300 people she left to pursue her own project to make an indie 
um, games and was looking to build up a relationship of play testers um, that were family focused. Um, so I helped her with a lot of different avenues of like building trust and creating community. And Pat, you'll probably appreciate this, even like the idea of the play test. Yeah. I said, let's send like a package, like let's send like mm -hmm. popcorn and lemonade and make it like a way for a family to get together, not this thing they have to check off, but like right. this enjoyment. So an event. when, when Pat and I, Tara, when I came on to this, um, interview, there was this like kind of goofy music going on in the background. Yeah. I said, oh, I, Zeev and I, my son and I were judging video games. Um, yeah. It was a, another client of mine, kids made digital So the other day, Tara and, brought home a bag of Reuben flavored potato yeah. chips. Yeah. I had a Cuban sandwich flavored potato <laughs> chips. Well, how was it? Was it good? So I'm going to guess it was similar to Ruben. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to bounce back to you to say which flavor profile was the most prominent. Uh, sauerkraut. Yeah. For the Cuban sandwich, it was a pickle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like a mustardy pickle, which you hope for. I mean, I guess mm -hmm. that would make the most sense. I think that they started with the recipe for like pickle chips and then like went with like, and then tried to make it into sauerkraut or like okay bigger, and then make it sauerkraut and then they're like oh how can we maybe add the meat let's do a little meaty a little meaty yeah. shake sprinkle on this thing mm -hmm. so so i i i'm going off the board here i don't think that these in this case i don't think anybody knew what they were doing i think they just threw a bunch of stuff together they got a bunch of people blindfolded and say what does this remind you of there you go because it was terrible wow <laughs> I absolutely I terrible. Have, but Tara I introduced me to the funky was popcorn like that I actually think is like gross and delicious. What is it? It was the but it was like buttered corn flavored popcorn, fire roasted butter corn. Oh yeah, no 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 no. no. I like, like burnt it. I like burnt popcorn. Like Tastes like burnt popcorn basically. No, but I liked it. And then oh. I have a friend. Oh, you who, liked it. Oh, oh okay. I liked it. I had it first at Tara's, and I was like. Ew, is that at the at the studio? Yeah, I think I remember. I think it was one of those weird brands. Purchases. Oh, so it's not a regular. Uh, yeah, no. Have I you had the Voodoo me. chips? Uh, no, what that are Voodoo spice chips? Spice flavor. I think you two would like. I, my favorite, my favorite potato chip in all all time, and they don't you don't see it that often is um the the crab chip, or oh the, yes, or the Old Bay chip. Totally know what you're talking yeah. about. I like the crab and the old bay chip. Sometimes I like the mesquite. You know, they don't have it all the time. Mm -hmm. Cheddar and sour cream for me. I could eat a whole bag in one sitting. It's terrible. But I also like a sweet, I like the Hawaiian sweet onion. Mm -hmm. Those are good. Those are really good. Oh, no. Yeah. Every once in a while, a really, really good barbecue chip, especially if it's on the sweeter side. Ugh. But I can taste the MSG on them all. Well, like, it's just yeah. like it's it's just you know it's just a it's a flavor component. It's just it. MSG is a flavor enhancer. I know, and I can <laughs> I, I can taste it. I can taste it. It's it's used in all and all the good chefs use it. Mm. <laughs> um, is there anything you want to add, Heather? Um. Oh well, I, did I talk enough about sketchbook residency? I did buy mm -hmm. sketchbookresidency.com and .org was available. So okay. um, I'm fleshing that out. Artists will stay here uh, seasonally. We'll do it, you know, four times a year. And um, I'm hoping that we'll try to lower the barrier um, to make it much easier for artists to apply and be accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also hoping um so talk about this so you're saying basically you're going to invite artists to stay in your space but it's going to be subsidized by somebody else maybe if they need yes. to be okay yes. so yeah explain that because i don't it, think we covered their that. stay will be underwritten basically by anyone else whoever stays here right they're they're mm -hmm. all other paying guests will contribute to the fund that will cover them um and we'll just ask that they leave a piece of uh hand-drawn work that will be kind of a flat file in the space so that any other guest that comes here will be able to get exposed to this artist. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of like 
creating um, an opportunity for people to connect to better. But um, oh. is there any, uh, any message you have for the people out there you want to say as a, uh, as a goodbye? Uh, keep it playful. Keep it playful. I like it. All right. I'm going <laughs> to tell you guys to <laughs> do nice things without getting caught. Everybody have a great day. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, close down the meeting now. All, All right. right. Bye, Heather.